Hi, A10. Um, this is just a quick video to explain what I explained in the Google Meet with uh, my class yesterday on the 1st of July. Um, so it's going to be quite quick. Um, if you've got any questions, then just email me. So this is how to write up your Dawlish Warren virtual fieldwork case study. Um, what's quite funny, if you look at the pictures, um, on this day, this is why not to wear flip-flops doing fieldwork for a safety reason. My flip-flops actually broke and Mr Gilbert spotted that the bag I was carrying was very appropriate. So that gave us a good laugh on the day we did this fieldwork. Okay, so the um, two learning objectives are to understand the processes involved in the formation of Langstone Rock, which is the headland, and the sand spit at Dawlish Warren. And then secondly, to understand the ways the landforms are being threatened and how they're being managed. So this is kind of going to take you two lessons to write up. OK, you'll notice on I've attached two documents. So one document is the fieldwork instructions, which I've screenshot onto this slide. Um, so it tells you what to do for each section. And there's another one, which is a lower ability one for those of you that maybe have a target grade of five or less, or even if you just want to use it as a guide, because obviously you're at home on your own, you're not in school with me explaining it to you. Um, you can do it, type it up if you want, if you prefer, or you can do it as a double page or, or more in your in your book. Absolutely fine. Um, and you're going to have two lessons in which to do it. So today's lesson plus another lesson next week. There's also a load of key words on this page um, for spellings and just to recap your memory. Um, so question one is how has geology affected the distinctive landform at Langstone Rock? So you'll see on the map um, at the top left hand corner of the map, there's an arrow and that's pointing to Langstone Rock, the headland, OK, which is made up of Devonian sandstone and you hopefully have written quite a lot of notes on this from the video I made that was upside down and back to front when we were actually at Dawlish Warren last week. So you need to write a summary. So I'm not expecting like loads and loads of writing here. Some of you might write more than others and that's absolutely fine. But use your notes that you made last lesson. There's a fact sheet that I put on Show My Homework a couple of weeks ago. You could use that. And I want you to explain how the headland was formed and how the geology has affected the headland. So talking about the sedimentary rock, the fact that it was laid down 500 million years ago, the breccia, that kind of thing. Then you need to write how it's being eroded. So you might want to include um, pictures of the arch and so on. And I'll show you that in a minute. And also how it's being protected. Is a photograph of the arch taken from the other side so you can see here I've just labelled some things on it so the railway runs right the way through this cutting so you can, basically they cut into the headland here um, and the railway runs all the way down from the Midlands or London down to the southwest so it's a really vital um, source of income for people in the southwest and that's why you can see they've spent a lot of money, millions and millions on protecting it. So they've put riprap, which are these big boulders in front of the seawall, which protects the railway line. You can also see um, the arch and in the arch there is a wall that they've that they've built to sort of protect it from undercutting. Um, there's lots of biological weathering on the top. You can see a wave cut notch, which is like um, the undercutting at the base of the cliff. And the wave cut platform is the base of the cliff before it eroded. So where I where the arrow points to wave cut platform, that would have been the headland years and years ago. OK, so that's like the rocky platform that's left behind. And it's often um, forms rock pools at low tide, as you can see in this picture. This was. This was a student that um, drew a picture, so drew their own kind of um, field sketch of this when we were actually at Dawlish Warren not that long ago, a couple of years ago. So you could use this if you want to draw your own, that'd be fantastic. Or you could print this one and stick it in if you want. This is a picture of Langstone Rock looking from the breakwater.
So this is the kind of image that me and Mr Gilbert saw when we went to Langstone Rock, although this is much older, so it's changed a little bit. But the red arrow is pointing to the fault lines that are above the arch. So this shows why the arch has formed. And you can clearly see a cave and then an arch. And then eventually that archway, the roof of it may collapse and you'd be left with a stack. So it's a really good um, example of the classic cave arch stack formation that you've learnt about in previous lessons. This is just another um, example of a field sketch. So it just gives you more information if you want it. Okay, so the second question that you need to answer from the sheet is how have the processes of transportation and deposition affected the distinctive sand spit at Dawlish Warren? So this map, basically Dawlish Warren, the main beach at Dawlish Warren, is a sand spit. So it's like a big um, collection of sand at the mouth of the River X. And it's formed longshore drift. So if you look at this um, photograph, is which I took when we were at Dawlish Warren last week, this is looking towards Exmouth. So you can see the sand banks at Exmouth, which sort of are between Exmouth and Dawlish Warren. And behind the sand spit, so on the sand spit, but behind the beach, there is massive dunes, which are a really good um, breeding ground for birds and lots of rare species of plants. And it's actually a site of special scientific interest. So it's a really important nature reserve. So the sand spit is vital for the nature, for the scientific interest and for the houses and people that live behind the sand spit, because the sand spit protects those places from flooding um, or wave attack. So sand spits are really vital. The image of Dawlish Warren from the sky. See this one, you can sort of see how the sand spit um, has covered across the, the mouth of the River X. Um, it can't completely join up to Exmouth because obviously you've got the flow of the River X and the currents that come through there. And those of you that know Exmouth will know that the currents that come through that gap are really, really powerful. So boats find it quite hard to navigate through that. Um, they have to have quite a lot of power to get through those currents. Okay, so in order to answer this, you need to recap um, how a sand spit's formed. So remember, um, it's all about the direction of longshore drift. So at Dawlish Warren, the longshore drift tends to happen from the west towards the east. And so sand is picked up, moved along in a diagonal motion, as you can see in the diagram, and then it's deposited where there is a break in the coastline. So the break in the coastline is the estuary. So you can see in this image, the sand spit gradually grows and grows and grows and curves inwards and forms this bank of sand, which often, as you can see in the picture at the bottom, then is a really good area where sand dunes start developing. OK, the third and final section of your write up on this is about the coastal management. So for this section, you will need to write a little bit about each of the following um, sea defences. So the sea wall, which is the same as the one we've got at Sidmouth with a wave return. So it's got a curved top. Riprap, which is the big boulders I've already explained. Groins, a breakwater, gabions and sea bees. OK. This is a wooden groin. Um, next week you will see a video of Mr Gilbert doing some measurements here. But basically the wooden groins aim to keep the sediment, the sand on the beach. So as the sand is moved from west to east, you can see here the groin has picked up more sand on the west so that the sand doesn't just disappear across to Exmouth. And then it's going to protect the sand dunes and so on. In the background, you can also see um, revetment which is the sort of diagonal sloping seawall and to the right of the picture there's actually some gabions which are uh, kind of baskets of stones which they put at the base of sand dunes and the aim of that is to build up the sand dune. Okay this is a closer up image of the revetment so the revetment is basically these concrete slabs built at an angle and the reason it's built at an angle is to increase the capacity of water that can fill that space. So when the tide is really, really high, it actually increases the amount of water that that area can hold before it flows over to the back 
onto the sand dunes. So you can see a picture of me and Mr Gilbert sat on the seawall in the revetment at Dawlish Warren when we did our field work. OK, this is a really interesting one that was quite new. Um, I hadn't seen this before. These are sea bees and basically they're light revetment. So they're built at the same kind of angle. But instead of just being solid, they have these holes in the concrete blocks and the holes aim to allow the water to actually go through and soak into the sand behind. So rather than just um, re retracting back into the sea, they, the sea actually gets absorbed into the land behind and that will actually help feed the dunes because um, water will be absorbed for them. And then these are, you can see the wall that is built between the arch at the base of the arch. So that was built to stabilise the base of the arch, so to stop further undercutting. And then the breakwater is the wall to the right of the picture that sticks right out into the sea. And that is to basically protect the headland from really big, powerful waves. So to really try and protect it from hydraulic action. OK, so you are going to have two lessons to complete this. You're going to have today's lesson and next Wednesday's lesson, and it's going to include these three sections. So they can be as brief or as detailed as you want. OK, obviously, those of you that write in more detail might be learning a little bit more, but it's up to you. Um, you can print out any of the pictures if you want to. And I've attached all the information you need on Show My Homework. Um, you're going to have this lesson and one of your lessons next week. OK, have a good day. And don't forget, there is a quiz on Friday afternoon. So Friday the 3rd of July at 2.20, general knowledge, silly questions and a section on Dawlish Warren. I'll see you tomorrow.